Well, you know, there's no better way to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II than to go to Las Vegas, Nevada to shoot fully automatic weapons from World War II and see a lot of military vehicles and all kinds of things they have there for us to enjoy. And so we went there to Las Vegas, Nevada to shoot these fully automatic weapons and you gotta bring a friend because you need someone to run the camera. And what you do is you go to the website and you pick out the gun you want to shoot and make a list and how many rounds you want. Then they figure out how much it's gonna cost. You give them the credit card and they set you up to shoot fully automatic weapons. What fun that's gonna be. So yes, this is Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yes, there is a hot lead zone in Las Vegas. See, the helicopter proves it. But anyway, we're here at Battlefield Vegas. This is a range that specializes in shooting fully automatic weapons for anybody who is visiting the Las Vegas area who wants to give it a try. And it's right across from Circus Circus on Sammy Davis Jr. Boulevard. So with us today is Arturo, and we're having fun here, but uh, this is the place. Let's go inside and check it out. And, but first of all, there's all kinds of vehicles out here that uh, looks like very interesting stuff. Let's go ahead and check that now, out. This happens to be a 113 armored personnel carrier track vehicle that was used by the U.S. Army for many, many years. Now this vehicle is very commonly used in Vietnam. Now that of course has been supplanted by the Bradley fighting vehicle. And this is a view of what you don't want to see. It's the nightmare of Nazi troops. It's a 30 caliber model 1919 Browning from a tank. This is a Sherman tank. Let's get you a better picture of that. So here's the actual documentary history of this M4 Sherman. So some of the parts that were wrecked and replaced. What you see here is Iwo Jima, 1945. So make that a nightmare of the Japanese troops on Iwo Jima as this tank was bearing down on them. Now this here is either a British chieftain or centurion tank. Can't make out the exact uh, model here because I don't know those very well, but this is a fairly recent uh, model tank, main battle tank. Now this of course is an M60 Battlefield Vegas. That's probably a 105 millimeter gun. But uh, yeah, M60, that uh, was our main battle tank for many, many years. What? Can you please take my picture? Sure. Oh, the, okay. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And this is the backside of the M60. <laughs> now Arturo and I are walking down this whole row of Humvees that Battlefield Vegas uses to pick up passengers that, that are going to come here to shoot from the strip. So they just take these out and pick up people on the strip to bring them right here to shoot. So you see the sign there, shoot full auto at Battlefield Vegas. And we have here an M3A1 armored scout car, U.S. Army. First saw combat in the Philippines, 1941, and it was also all the way up to 1960s. Big in the invasion of Sicily, etc., etc. This is a great uh, specimen of an armored vehicle from the U.S. Army. Sounds good. So there's Arturo by one of our real standbys. This is a Army truck, one of the caissons that keep rolling and rolling. So Arturo's checking it out. How's the inside look there, Arturo? Look very cool. Look like you got a lot of bottles. Now this is diesel, of course, as you see from that stack. D 
These trucks were made by the tens and hundreds of thousands and sent to Russia to help them fight. Well, what you see here is a Model 177 howitzer of the U.S. Army. However, the uh, back section, including the breech blocks, has been taken off for good reason, I'm sure. But yeah, they deployed these recoil arms here to stabilize this, and then these could shoot in volley fire so that in different elevations, they could fire three rounds before the first one hit, and then they would all hit at the same time. So if you had a battery of, say, four of these, you could get uh, as many as uh, 12 rounds to land on a target at the same time. Amazing. And with the type of shells they had, you're looking at uh, very effective terminal ballistics. This little rascal looks like a BB-8. It'll fit in your regular residential garage. So what do you think, Arturo? Uh, let's, let's go ahead and get one of these. That you think, great. You think Linda would like that? I don't think so. <laughs> Doesn't get good gas mileage, I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> every, every 10 miles you need to stop in the gas station? Yeah, really. This is an anti-tank gun, self-propelled, so these things rolled around and hunted tanks. And here's your self-propelled artillery. That is a 105 millimeter gun that's self-propelled. They loaded the ammo into the back. Self-propelled artillery would go and set up and deliver the goods whenever the calls came in for fire missions. Vietnam War. Yep, this is a Vietnam War Huey helicopter. Also starred in the uh, Star Trek movie the, uh, about the whales, yeah. the voyage home. So uh, that's uh, George Takai in the cockpit there piloting the Huey. So another 113 armored personnel carrier and then some equipment from the Seabees. Wow. Followed by another tank and this one has uh, looks like some reactive armor on there. But uh, this is uh, an old tank, main battle tank. I can't tell what, it, what that is. Is that a Merkava? Could this be a Merkava tank? It looks like it might be a Merkava. Nice. That would be Israeli. So here we see a, a dual Bofors 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun. And you see those things in the back end of the breach that's sticking up. Those are the ammunition guides for the four round clips that they dropped in there as fast as they could. And uh, these were pedal fired. The gunner just hit this pedal in alternating sequence. Probably taken off of a destroyer or some kind of cruiser because it's uh, got a lot of corrosion on it. And then here's another 40 millimeter dual Bofors. And the sights have been knocked off. There you see the pedals that were used to fire the guns. And a good look at that breach where the ammunition four round clips were thrown in. Uh, if I didn't know any better, I would guess that that was a V2 rocket, except that there's no rocket. So this is some kind of bomb or facsimile. Although you can see a little panel there where they would load the explosives in. So. You got me, this might be a bunker busting bomb or something of that nature, hard to say. But those, those fins in the back look like rocket fins. Hard to ID this rascal. So this lot is just full of armored vehicles. Right here in Las Vegas. Look at all those tanks. Look at all those armored personnel carriers. Self-propelled self -propelled artillery. Okay, there must be about 30 tanks and armored vehicles in this lot. But the star is the one you're looking at right now. This is an M1 Abrams tank. It's our current main battle tank. Looks like it might not be the 120 millimeter gun though. So it might be an earlier model. But what's happening is it's crushing a Toyota. Or is that a Nissan? But it's crushing it. 
So Battlefield Vegas. Goodness, I don't think that car is going to be uh, the same. Yes. Can you tell what that is? is? What kind of car that is? I tried. To is that a Honda? Is it crushing a Honda? No, it's a Ford. No, Chevy. Oh, it's crushing a Chevy. Maybe they can be a Chevy Malibu. You know, there's something inherently wrong about that. Look at that broken glass. So it actually crushed it. So this main battle tank of the United States is feared worldwide and it has a gas turbine engine that turns out a lot of horsepower so that this tank can go like 45 miles an hour over fairly rough terrain and not only that but the gun is stabilized so it can shoot on the move and hit targets four miles away and the the heavy tungsten penetrator or depleted uranium that they used uh, would defeat any tank on any battlefield in existence. Now here's a interesting tank and I think that this is a Pershing but I could be wrong. Arturo thinks it's a, it's a Pershing but uh, what it is is uh, the upgrade this could be a Pershing or a Patton tank one of the ones that succeeded the M3s. This looks like one of our Apaches. Apaches. Yeah, but it's uh, everything's been taken off of it. But uh, you see the weapons pylons and all the avionics in the nose have all been taken off. The engine and rotor blades are gone. But uh, this is a very fast helicopter and it goes in, darts in and launches all its uh, missiles and ordnance. And there's actually a gun underneath there. They don't have the gun. Even when I be fine, have one of those. <laughs> yeah, they even have one of those classic jeeps. That one gonna be so <laughs> fun. Linda would like to drive that. Yeah. They've even got one of the old army half tracks. Amazing. There's the tracks in the back and the two tires in front, and a couple of our fine Humvees. So we're here at Battlefield Las Vegas and this place is absurd. Turns out you can shoot a lot of these kind of weapons right here on the premises and we're going to do that. That happens to be an 81 millimeter mortar. There's a MG34. And a Ma Deuce. With the killer there, Steve, with a grenade. Oh, wow. Well, it turns out we're not, uh, these, are, these guns are not for sale, they're for shooting. So you can go ahead and pick out what you want to shoot, and let's go ahead and sign up and shoot. A lot of business here. So this is a 25 yard indoor range. That's helping us out here and there are weapons right there. So Arturo, you want to go first? You go first. No, you go first. I want to see you. Okay, so it's like this. So there's the PPSH on the left. And the center is the grease gun. And the stand is the one on the right. And then we got the Bren, the British uh, Bren gun on the right, and the 1919 30-06. Uh, that's the classic uh, 1919, except this one has the shoulder stock on it. We got ready. So I get the whole magazine, right? Right hand, left hand, shoulder. Bring your face down. Aim it a little high. 
high right now. You want to hold it about right there. Hold it on target, let them have it. Is. When you close that, that stops the bolt from from go slamming forward. Oh, okay. I yeah. never knew that. <laughs> I'm a younger guy. I don't know that kind of stuff. So when you close the cover, that's the safety, and you open it, it's on fire. Right. The red circle. Excellent job. This thing fires super fast. So you guys are messy. Hang on, Stuart. Hang on. So this is the Bren 303. And this is one of the, uh, <laughs> the guns that uh, was famous in World War II when uh, the British used these all the way from North Africa all the way to Normandy so it's, a, it's one of the world's most respected uh, light machine guns. Wow, you really know your history. Alright, so Bryn needs no more further instruction. Right hand, left hand shoulder, bring the face down, sights, red circle. Okay. Can you see that magazine just real quick? Yeah, of course. 303 British. It's got the rim. It's a rim round. Did y'all need a briefing? Yeah. There you go, sir. Fire from an open, from the open bolt. Open bolt. Yes, sir. Just like most of these older weapons we're shooting. I need more. I need more length here. Yeah. Oh, the sights way down there. Oh, yeah. Okay, the Browning, Browning Model 1919 is a light machine gun used by the U.S. Armed Forces, but it was also made into aircraft mount uh, used by Great Britain also during the uh, Second World War in their aircraft. All right, Ooh, well, right hand, left hand, sights, red circle. Okay. Oh, okay. You got 40 rounds in
Red circle, this shoots really fast, okay? Okay, quick bursts. You shot that like a Russian. You guys have fun? Yeah. Sure can't beat a couple of burgers coming back from the machine gun range. So thanks to Arturo making a couple of burgers for us. Look at that. Oh boy. Oh boy. Mr. Steve? Thank you so much. Enjoy.